what's happening, everybody? It's Too Much Fantasy Football. We are back. Brian and Brennan here to talk about tight end tiers. I don't know about you, Brennan, but I'm feeling like it's tight end to... There's, there's a joke in there somewhere. We're bringing back the Taylor Swift jokes. Aren't you excited? I thought you were going to say tight end Tuesday, and then you stopped, and I was like, I don't know where this is going. Yeah, I, I didn't either. We, we hopped on the Taylor Swift joke, and I, I know a few more songs. I've got a, a list pulled up here. We'll see if we can slide them in there. Nope, nope. We just lost a, a listen. Never mind. No more Taylor Swift jokes. Cut that. Cut that. We're good. Uh, but how are we doing tonight? Just another night in paradise, man. Can't wait to break down these uh, exclusive players. Right, you have been blowing up my phone. All you've been wanting to do is talk about tight ends, folks. He wanted to do this first in this series. I said, "No, we got to save the best for last." Same with those bar tricks. Everybody's coming back to see what all you can pull off well, here. It's my wife texting you more so about me mentioning Travis Kelsey's name because that's her favorite player to watch right now because that's all she cares about. Ah, uh, so she knows how old he is, huh? So we should have asked her yes, last episode. She <laughs> she probably knows his blood type at this point. Well, I mean, they've got to make sure that they've got plenty ready in case he ever gets hurt, you know. I, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> With Rashi Rice driving around there, who knows? He could get a foot run over at any time. Too soon? That's Ugh. okay. I mean, we'll find out here shortly. <laughs> All right, let's talk about these tight ends here. Uh, your first tier is a bit bigger than mine, so we're going to start with me. I've got the Stay Healthy group. I've got the 2020 Kings, the Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews. I still believe that these guys are the the top tier. These they're the number one on their team. They're going to get fed. Travis Kelsey's got that touchdown upside, and so does Mark Andrews. So I, I love to see them still up there as long as we can get a full uh, – give me 14 games, and I'd be happy with these, with that from these two. But I just think that they are going to be as consistent as you can get within the league. I mean, I don't hate that you have Travis Kelsey Mark Andrews as the one. Like, I, I see the logic in that. Like, when it's coming to the end zone for the Chiefs, it's Travis Kelsey. The dude always – Always open. It's Mahomes' go-to guy, which is always nice to have when it's Mahomes being at the you know targeting you. And then Mark Andrews again. I think he was on pace to you know finish as a top three until he had the hip drop tackle and breaks his ankle. Unfortunately, um, for me, my tier is a little more different. Um, my tier is just safe. I think these there's four guys in this tier that I think no matter what they will be tight end ones again if they play all seventeen. But isn't saying a whole lot about tight ends. But these guys I think will I'll be specifying more. They'll be top five if they all play every game and they finish it out they should be as a tight end five which it's sam laporte is my one travis kelsey mark andrews and trey mcbride so i have sam laporte as my number one i don't think it's a fluke i think i thought it was a fluke and then when you really dive into the numbers the dude is legit a good route runner and he is always open for jared goff and he's also he finds the end zone too he had i forgot how many touchdowns he had quite a bit almost Ten. close to double digit yeah exactly yeah. But one of those was a three touchdown game and a two touchdown game in there. Now they really didn't add any more offensive pieces. I was kind of excited to see at the end of the first round. Maybe they grabbed another wide receiver. Seems like they believe in uh, uh, what's his name, Williams, Jamison Williams, Jamison Williams. Uh, yep. So I, I guess maybe we're going to see him finally get unleashed here in year six, seven of him. No, I'm kidding. I'm being dramatic. <laughs> I'm sorry, this, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't hate Sam Laporta. I think he is safe. He's in my next tier for me. I just think that there is the experience between the chemistry between the the offense and the you know the tight end and the quarterback in that first two tiers, uh, because I do have uh, Laporta McBride, but I've got them looped in with Dalton Kincaid, who just jettisoned all the targets. Fifty three targets, fifty three percent of the targets were vacated from the Bills. So Dalton Kincaid should have one hell of a season. And then Kyle Pitts. We just had the schedule drop a couple days ago. Falcons have a pretty nice schedule. I'm very excited for my exposure to Falcons right now because I think Kyle Pitts is going to have an amazing season. He broke a thousand yards his rookie season. That's not common. Like it, it can't be understated enough how uncommon it was. Hilarious because he got one touchdown internationally, and we we still haven't seen that break out. But if this guy can do the two if we can marry that with Kirk Cousins back there who doesn't break and we've got a backup in case he gets hurt we've got Michael Penix who can throw the ball so I'm very confident that that Kyle Pitts can contend for possibly those top two spots as well no I agree I mean my next tier is the potential to be the number one tight end so it's Don Kincaid and Kyle Pitts again like you said Don Kincaid is in a situation where his competition is James Cook who Granted, he's good receptions, and then Keon Coleman, who they drafted in basically the late first, beginning second, Curtis Samuel, and Khalil Shakir. I think there's a 
pretty big possibility that Dalton Kincaid leads his team in targets. And so if he does that with Josh Allen just chucking the ball the way he does, I mean, I could definitely see him being tight in one. And then again, I have Kyle Pitts in this one as well. I mean, just because it's the same outlier, new quarterback. I mean, just the, the the possibilities are endless with both these guys. I'm excited for both of them. If we can yeah. keep their ADP contained, because that's my biggest fear. They have a high, very high upside, but we get excited about tight ends. We get too excited about tight ends. We don't remember the burns that come with these guys because where if you finish at tight end six, that's awesome. But not really. Like there's a huge gap between tight end one, two, and three, and tight end four. There's a bigger gap between tight end four and tight end five. You know, like these yeah. tiers almost jump down drastically. So when you end of the day you finish with tight end 10, 11, 12, you're excited because that's tight end one. But honestly, if you streamed all season, you probably would have had a close to a tight end, you know, seven, eight if you just decent with streaming. Uh the next My tier, question to that, you though. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. My question to you, though, so we, I have Kincaid ahead of Pitts, but you have Pitts ahead of Kincaid. Do you, you, you have, so you think Pitts will be, have the better points ahead of Kincaid? I will say I actually didn't put any of these guys in a particular order. Like if they're uh, okay. in a tier, they're just kind of interchangeable. But Got you. I will say my pit, Pitts exposure is much higher in, in, than Kincaid in best ball. So I do, I, I'm putting my money more on Pitts than I would Kincaid. Okay. But that's nothing against Kincaid. I would take him over. I take him over Trey McBride. I take Sam Laporta. I think. I think. Oh shoot, they're in the same tier. But I think McBride would be four. Laporta three. Yeah, I think I've got him in the order. I'd keep him. Uh, Pitts, Kincaid, okay. Laporta, McBride. That's, oh man. But I just want to tilt all over the place. So as I say that, like I just want to sit here and spin and circle. <laughs> Let's just say if I don't get the, these six tight ends, I'm not taking one until double digit plus rounds. Uh, this next tier for me is load in tight end one, George Kittle, Evan Ingram, uh, David Njoku, Jake Ferguson, Hunter Henry. I think all of these guys, they'll have enough uh, involvement. They'll have enough touchdowns, targets if you're Evan Ingram, that they will be involved, but they're going to have those dud weeks that really hurt you, that they don't warrant the high uh, draft capital that you're going to probably have to spend for these guys. Uh, Cause Evan Ingram and David Njoku I've loved for the last two years, but uh, now at this point they are too rich for me. Cannot afford them. Fair enough. I mean, for me, I have uh, Evan Ingram and David Njoku. I meant to switch out George Kittle this year, but I think it's underrated and undervalued. I still think Evan Ingram for whatever reason is just, I mean, he's just been solid with the Jags, and I think there's no signs of slowing down. He knows the system, and Trevor Lawrence clearly have a connection with one another. So I know the price is probably high on him, but for whatever reason, in most of my drafts, tight ends just fall. Like, it's just they'd rather, like, I'd rather have a wide receiver three than this tight end. I'll get one later. So, like, these are guys, these are two guys that I think will eventually fall in actual drafts that you're part of just because they're just not sexy picks, but I feel like both of them will just be – You'll put him in as your tight end. You'll you'll start him. You don't have to really worry about it because at the end of the day, they will finish as a tight end one. It's not saying a lot, but you just know that it's just you don't have to worry about that position. Yeah, I get that. I like I said, if I can get them at the right cost, I love having them on my team just because of the consistency of them. But it's I don't know. I, I get in the worst drafts. I guess everybody I draft with loves the tight ends, and I hate it because I want to love the tight end position. I do. I really do, people. Uh, what's your next tier so my next tier is I will finish as a tight end one but that's not saying much so again it's George Kittle, Jake Ferguson Dallas Goddard, Cole Komet Dalton Schultz, these guys will hover anywhere from tight end 8 to tight end 14 on a week to week basis and it's just not something I really want to draft just because their, their situations are just it's just you know, George Kittle could be the feature for one week, which is great. But then the next week, he can only have one reception for 20 yards. And then he's just blocking for the rest of the game. You know, Jake Ferguson, again, like I think he's probably a little bit higher in this one just because Dallas didn't do a whole lot to fix their situation. Um, but again, that could get that could get really messy just because if they start to know that you're going to throw it a lot, it covers down on you. Um, Cole Komet, again, he's late in the pecking order. Dalton Schultz is, I mean, you got three wide receivers that could potentially, you know, have all finished as high as, you know, wide receiver two, wide receiver one. It's just hard to, to break out in that group. And then, so I, 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 this is a tough group. These are the guys I'm probably avoiding at all costs. 
I worry that I do get too excited about Ferguson because I have him in a tier above where you have him. Uh, he yeah. gave you seven top ten finishes last year. I just think that you're not going to find that consistency with the rest of these guys. So I, I want to like him. Like you said, Dallas mm-hmm. is going to throw the ball a bunch. Brandon Cooks, I, I, my exposure to him is, is growing a little bit. But I worry is that age cliff there. And then who knows behind them with those other wide receivers, you know. I won't be owning anybody. Like yeah, Dallas Goddard, Schultz, Komet, and I've gotten Brock Bowers in that tier for me. I just don't want to own any of them. I won't spend – if I stream them because they hit the waiver wire at some point during the season, sure, but I can guarantee you I don't think I'll spend a dime on any of these players just because they're going to be falling probably, what, rounds 10, 11, 12, 13, somewhere in there. At That's that around point, there, just, yeah, double-digit rounds, yeah. At that point, give me a tight end with you know one of my last couple of picks or maybe two of my last picks just to you know see who's going to really play after week one because <laughs> – you don't want to hold these guys. If Komet just comes out and drops an egg or gives you less than four points week one, do you really want to move on to week two with that? Probably not. So I'd much rather take my shot at a wide receiver at that round in the draft. Yeah, I would say like for those, for tight ends, like probably it's a three-week hold. I'd be like just – it's after three weeks, that's – unless you see some somebody on the waiver wires that put up two touchdowns and 100 yards and you're like, that's the new hot commodity. I'm going to replace that. Yeah, I was going to say Sam Laporta went undrafted in so many leagues, and he was coming on round one, two, and three, and that's the worst situation. If you're sitting there holding a guy that you drafted in round 12 at at Dallas Goddard, and you're like, the Eagles are good, they're a great team, and then you just let something like that bypass, and that's that's the hardest part for me. So I want somebody that I can easily cut that I take in the last round that I feel no remorse for, and Mm -hmm. you get caught up in emotions with 12th and 11th round tight ends. Don't do it, people. Don't do it. (laughs) <laughs> Brennan, you got anything else for us tonight i have one last year and it's why do the raiders draft me slash my dark horse so it's brock bowers if you didn't know um brock bowers is an elite talent like this guy has been touted as the best tight end to come out for a while i know there's kyle pitts but he's a, he's elite in the sense that he can block he can run routes he's got great hands and he's great with yards after the catch. I When you take someone like that, you do have to somewhat implement him early on to kind of see what it, what he's going to do. So if you, let's just say, I typically punt on tight end if I don't get the top five guys. Like at that point, I will keep taking players. I'll take a shot in the dark on a running back too that might, you know, win the backfield or a wide receiver three that might be end up being the wide receiver two before I start taking tight ends. Like it's just, he's, he will be the guy that I'd probably draft last. Like, like, all right. Like I, I think the world of him, I think he finishes ahead of his ADP. It just sucks because he's at the Raiders and it's, I know Gardner Minshew can throw the football, but can he throw it well enough is the problem. I guess Aiden McConnell too. And we talked about in the last episode, too, Devontae Adams. He's at that age cliff. If he falls off, they may be in, you know, looking for a number one pass catcher in this team. You know, so Brock Bowers has a potential to really compete for, if not the number two, maybe even the number one spot, depending on where Devontae Adams is. Julio Jones fell off so quickly, so unexpectedly. So we can't ignore that with some of these older wide receivers. So if Brock Bowers, I imagine his ADP is going to keep falling. Right now in best ball, he's going at a tight end 10. A lot of that's from the pre-draft hype. So we're watching you know, the, this adjust. But if we can get him significantly later, tight end 17, tight end 18, tight end 20, even if people are really turned off by just this landing spot, I think that's where we can have an advantage at drafting him late, late in the, in the, uh, in the drafts. Yeah. I agree. Well, let's get out of here. Before we do, make sure we tell everybody where can we find us, of course, here on the Fantasy Football Advice Network. We're following. We're clicking the bell. We've got those notifications turned on. Brennan, what else you got going on? I am on Twitter on FFANBMOLK, and then you can find me on the Facebook group on Fantasy Football Advice Network, and that's about it where you can find me most times. And unfortunately, due to YouTube's... uh, they held us back. We couldn't do the bar tricks that we, we talked about doing. So head over to the Facebook group, the Fantasy Football Advice Network, and we're going to be doing them there, posting videos left and right. So 
<laughs> keep an eye out. You can find me at too much underscore Brian on Twitter. And of course, all over the place, check out my best ball show. We've got too much best ball. Just dropped another episode the other day. We're talking about, well, the schedule drops. We have to make sure we're ready for the season, but until next time, we'll see y'all later.